I was rushed to the Wessex Neurological Unit in Southampton. I had um, an operation to sort out the brain hemorrhage. Um, I was in hospital for around two and a half, three weeks, I think. I was very much lying in a bed, couldn't feel my head, and frankly, it was like thinking through black treacle. I just couldn't think. My brain didn't work properly. Ideally, we would need to get somebody to have a CT scan very early on, and our aim is to have those really within kind of minutes of somebody arriving in the accident emergency department. It would tell us two really important things, whether there is obviously a head injury, and by that we mean some bleeding, but also some associated issues to do with swelling. And that's the kind of thing that would again determine where we're going to go for this patient or the treatment that we're going to give them. If there is a blood clot on the outside of the brain, then this needs to be removed. The way that that's done is by a trapdoor of bone is then removed from the skull in order to give us access to the contents. You know, I had a brain hemorrhage, um, I had a crani craniotomy where they took the side of my skull off. I was kept in an artificial coma after the operation. My first coherent memories was of waking up and um, not being able to move, couldn't move at all. Um, I. I wasn't paralysed, I was actually pinned to the bed by the sheer number of tubes coming out of me. Some patients we find that don't need immediate surgery, but they need a period of monitoring on the intensive care unit. And that would involve a minor operation in order to put a pressure monitor through the skull into the brain. And that is, that tells us what's going on in the brain when we can't assess the patient neurologically. When I left hospital, I wasn't told what to expect. When I went back to college, it was very difficult. I could not sit in a lecture. Um, I would fall asleep in lectures, and I simply couldn't concentrate on the details, hence I, f I, I failed the course badly. I think the big thing are the cognitive effects of things, and this can be from, from things such as what we would call kind of cognitive fatigue, so it's just as that real kind of exhaustion and even doing things that they might have been doing quite simply in a day-to-day -day basis suddenly feels so much more difficult. Um, kind of all the way down to actually people having, you know, quite severe memory impairments and actually finding their ability to go back and do things that they were doing before much harder. People said I changed, I don't know if I did or not. I do not remember what I was like before my accident. I genuinely don't. I have no recollection of what I was as a person before as to what I am now. I just I don't have a strong connection to my childhood memories. It's like it happened to someone else. It's, it's a strange feeling. The psychological disability is very significant and that can involve things like memory disturbances, personality disturbances, as well as some of the less obvious physical symptoms such as headaches dizziness, problems with their vision. Speech and language is another big area and we often have what we sometimes call these kind of cognitive communication difficulties. So it's not as simple as just not being able to find the word. It may be more complex in actually understanding what a question is or they may be able to understand the question but actually then finding the appropriate answer can sometimes be quite difficult. And if you can imagine trying to go back into a workplace with a lot of these kind of issues it may be quite complicated. Sometimes I will forget what I'm saying. Um, which is a problem in my job if I'm doing a presentation or a conference or speech or something. It's almost as though you can feel your, your brain starting to power down. Whatever I've done in life, this brain injury has been there and it affects it. Just when you think you've got it nailed, it comes back and bites you again. Severe brain injuries will require constant care for the rest of their life. The support is either general practitioners trying to access social services and also through charities such as the Brain and Spine Foundation who are able to assist these people. In terms of support back in 1987 there really wasn't any. I decided to actually look into this myself so I went looking online to see if there was any help. There are a number of charities online um, dealing with brain injury and I started to read through the literature that was on there. So for 23 years I really didn't understand what I, what I was, how I was, and why I was, it was, it was difficult. It's a huge range of effects that people experience after a kind of moderate to severe brain injury. A lot of it's just finding out exactly what each person's problem is. We say to people that every head injury is unique and it's their head injury. I live my life each day as it comes. I didn't ask to have a, a brain injury, um, it was visited upon me. Um, I, I am 
I do not allow my brain injury and the, what I had to define my life. 